got Matt Zapali here. Thank you for joining this YouTube uh, uh, live. Oh, actually, this YouTube video is live on Facebook, but it's uh, reposted here on YouTube. This is the seven, Matt, Matt Zapali, the host of the Seven Figure Squad. And if you're watching this live right now, we are on the Facebook business page of Mike Smart Guy. And I have, boom, my mentor, dating back from 2005, going on 15 years now, who's taught me and I've taught my team, my strategy, my, my, these strategies from coast to coast on how to use life insurance. Not only just in the good times, but definitely in the bad times. And once again, <laughs> these strategies are proving its strength. We have here New York Times bestselling author, author of the book Missed Fortune 101. And what we'll talk about today, one of his newest books, The Laser Fund. Those for your left brain and for those for your right brain. <laughs> Doug, welcome to this live Thank stream. you. It's always an honor to be on, Matt. You're uh, one of my... Well, I better not tell uh, the audience you're one of my favorite people in the world with you listening because uh, anyway, yeah, you're awesome. Very cool. So uh, if uh, uh, anybody's curious, Douglas Andrew is in Salt Lake City. And uh, I, I, the, the quick story, quick backdrop, I remember it was like 2004, 2005, Doug. And I was like, you know, there's a correlation between mortgages, real estate and insurance. I don't know what it is. It just makes sense that these things vibe. It just makes sense that these things should connect. It's like peanut butter and jelly, but I don't know how to put yeah. the sandwich together. And then I go to the bookstore and I go and find this book. Mr. What? Started kid. I want to become a millionaire. And I go to the back. And I'm like, what about the author? I wonder if I said, I wonder if they do coaching. And then and I said, what? I can call parent. There's an 800 number here. Boom. And that's how we connected. Went to your uh, a team training. And how has it changed not only my life, but the thousands and thousands of clients? Doug, would you believe 15,000 clients were helped last year thanks to your strategies? Wow. Yeah. It's, it, there is a correlation there, and it's what uh, we call fiscal fusion. Fiscal fusion. <laughs> yeah. Putting it all together. So, Doug, that book was written during the height. Well, I picked it up during the height of the real estate market. Everybody's making money in real estate, real estate. Everybody's, everybody and their mother, brother was a real estate investor, realtor. But when I, when I went to your team training, half of the room was people from the real estate and mortgage industry. Why, why, right. why, why, was, that, why was that phenomenon? Why was the reach to the real estate community so, so strong? Not just the insurance industry. Well, it, it's interesting because uh, the real estate strategies only comprised about 25% of my book, but it was such a big aha because I've always taught my clients how to manage their real estate equity. And sometimes their only piece of real estate is their own home mm -hmm. uh, with strategies on how to get out of debt at least two and a half years faster than any method of sending extra principal payments to the mortgage company. No, you want to put it over here in a side fund. Well, what side fund? Well, a maximum funded indexed universal life was the superior side fund that passed liquidity, safety and rate of return tests with flying colors. And my, my first chapter was the, back then was the $25,000 mistake being made by millions of Americans. And I, I actually proved that if you socked away the money that you would send against your mortgage into an insurance contract, you'll have enough money in the insurance contract with compound interest tax-free that'll pay off uh, a 30 year mortgage in 12 and a half years instead of uh, what people were touting. Oh, we can get your house paid off in 15 or 20 years. And people just don't, think about it, but it also gives you the ability to access money in an emergency like happened in 2009 when real estate values went down. People sometimes criticized me and said, oh, neener, 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 Mr. Andrew, uh, you're underwater. You owe more than your house is worth. Did I care? No, I have never missed a mortgage payment because I had liquid cash over in my insurance contract that I could take out and make a mortgage payment. People who paid all that extra principal against against their mortgage, they and their house went down in value. They lost everything they gained over five or ten years of extra principal payments. So it sort of got the attention of a lot of people back then. And still, there's a lot of people don't that don't get it. But the other three fourths of the reason why I use max funded indexed universal life is for retirement planning, emergency funds, working capital for business, becoming your own banker, college funding. I mean, it knocks the socks off of a 529 college plan. So that's why in my newest book, uh, the right brain side has 12 chapters that talk about all kinds of ways you use indexed universal life for goals other than just retirement. But retirement is one of the big ones.
Doug, you're going to give away a link here towards the end and how people can get a copy of this book. Yes. Yes, I will. And it, okay. it's free. It's free. We'll send one out. Uh, you just cover five ninety five shipping and handling, which, uh, uh, and then we, I'll buy the book. You pay the shipping and handling. So make sure you stay tuned for this entire interview to get the nuggets, get the juice, get the mean potatoes. We'll send this link here towards the end of this interview. Douglas Andrew. So why, why are people so until this day still so unaware of life insurance being a living benefit versus more so a, a, a death benefit? Why, why is that phenomenon still in our country? Oh, well, the traditional financial planning industry, of course, and, and I can talk about this for hours, but I'll just give you a snippet here. Sure. Uh, they And I used to have a series one securities license, okay? And I had over 3,000 clients in 13 Western states back in uh, 1974 to 1980. And I was trying to do my darndest to uh, have them be diversified in the portfolio of mutual funds, buy term, invest the difference. I was one of the biggest proponents of that. And it was in 1980 that E.F. Hutton came out with the idea, why don't we buy term and invest the difference under a tax-free umbrella? There are still people who don't understand this. And, and so many of the broker dealers and the financial institutions, they don't want their advisors to know or, uh, or understand this. I could stump most uh, certified financial planners in less than 30 seconds asking them about Tefra, Defra, and Tamra. And they may <laughs> have heard of it, but they, they have no clue. And, and so when I, when I get on the radio and I say, yeah, uh, since 1980, when I first uh, started helping my clients and owned my own max funded universal life, indexing didn't come around until 1997. Uh, I have averaged 8.2% tax free. Uh, since indexing in 1997, I've averaged 10.07% uh, on my universal life by using uh, the strategies of indexing, number one, and number two, by rebalancing my portfolio based upon, are we in a recession, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, or whether mm -hmm. it's enough time. And so I've averaged 10.07. That's net. Net. I've actually been earning 11 and netting. 10. Uh, what's the 1% difference? It's not tax. It, it's the cost of the insurance that the IRS says has to be there uh, under TEFRA, DEFRA, and TAMRA tax citations so that your money accumulates tax-free under Section uh, 72E of the Internal Revenue Code. You can access it tax-free under Section 7702. And when you ultimately die, it blossoms in value and transfers income tax-free under Section 101A. And, and those three sections of the code uh, have made life insurance a sacred cow for over a hundred years. But see, it was Hutton who said, let's not take uh, and try to just get the most insurance for death and pay the least premium. Why don't we take the least amount of insurance the IRS will let us get away with and put in the most money and turn this thing into a cash cow. Now, there are critics in the industry that go, I've never seen an insurance policy earn eight or 10%. Uh, and I usually quit back Oh, really? So you've never seen one, so you don't think it exists. Uh, you probably haven't seen your br brain before, so that probably doesn't exist either, you know? And uh, Because th their reasoning is stupid. And uh, Emron shows statement after statement after statement where people have been locking in gains from from last year and the year before, and their average returns have been seven, eight, nine, ten percent average. Of course, some years like 2017, many of our clients capped out at 16 and 25 percent. The key is if the next year the market crashes 20, 30, 40 percent, they don't lose the 25 percent they made in 2017. And that's the lock in and reset feature that I love about the index universal life. Wow. So, so, so Doug, the, the, the conversation about People saying, I'm getting a job, benefits, healthcare, and a 401k. You got a great chapter here on 401k and IRAs. Why would you never put your money inside a 401k and IRA after knowing what you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Two reasons. First of all, uh, IRAs and 401ks were built on the premise of a tax deferral and 91% of Americans still put their money. I think they're duped into putting money into IRAs or 401ks being told they're going to be in a lower tax bracket when they retire. Matt, that has not been true or axiomatic for over 25 years. 
It took the financial services industry uh, until two or three years ago to finally admit, oh, most people who save anything uh, are not in a lower bracket when they retire. They're going down the highway uh, towards financial uh, security, financial independence with one foot on the gas pedal and the other foot on the brake pedal and they don't know they're doing it. Uh, they're socking away money in a tax deferred account and then they're killing their deductions as they go. That's the foot on the brake. Uh, they pay off their house. They don't have that deduction. The kids are now gone later in life or if they're not gone, you can't deduct them anymore. Um, and then you, uh, you're you not contributing money to IRAs or 401ks that you don't have that deduction. If you're a business owner, you have th those deductions. And uh, and then Congress keeps raising taxes. I mean, this $6 trillion stimulus, mm. taxes are going to be going through the roof, okay? That is twice as much money as the IRS collects in, in, in taxes in an entire year. And they're, they just passed to give it out, you know, the free money to help people. And I'm, I'm saying that's okay but that's not free money. We're going to be paying that back. And so what should you be doing right now? There is, there are opportunities, but no, I will never own an IRA or 401k or a Roth. Now some people say, what a Roth? Well, a, a Roth is a step in the right direction, mm -hmm. but a Roth only has two advantages. If you think uh, future taxes are going to be higher, uh, like the CBO, Congressional Budget Office, and the General Account uh, Accountability Office, they estimate that because of this stimulus, let alone 50% of voters in this country want uh, Medicare for all and, and free college. If that ever happened, they say taxes would have to go to 50, 60, or 70%. Let's say it's 50%. Would you rather get the taxes over and done with on your IRA or 401k? while your values are less and taxes are the lowest tax rate they will probably ever, ever be? Or do you want to uh, wait until it comes back up to the high water mark that you were at mid-February when the Dow almost hit 30,000? And then in 30 days later, mid-March, the Dow is, is down to around 20,000. It's now around 23,000 or so. But I mean, people saw a 33% loss in 30 days. That spells opportunity opportunity, and I've been showing this opportunity uh, on webinars for the last three weeks and people are blown away. And so uh, Roth has two advantages. Uh, you take after tax money, it accumulates tax-free, you can take it out tax-free. And a maximum funded indexed universal life has those two advantages. They've been around forever, but it has four additional advantages. I can throw in, if I'm a business owner and I've structured it correctly, I can throw in uh, 300,000 into my laser fund. And four days later, if I need 250 grand back, I can get it back out. I can't do that with a Roth. Uh, you would incur all kinds of penalties. You can't even put that much money in. In fact, the laser fund is what I call the maximum funded index universal life. CPAs, savvy CPAs and tax attorneys, they call it the rich man's Roth. And I snicker, you don't have to be rich to have one, but the rich can't own a Roth. And so um, you, you can put in large amounts if you could put in a uh, hundred or 200 or 300,000 into your universal life, uh, index universal life, and, and you only put in 10 or 20,000 in future years, you can make up for the, for the room you didn't use. You can't do that in a Roth, but I can access money out of my ins insurance contract for any reason whatsoever. I don't have to wait five years or till I'm 59 and a half, but there's not a Roth around that if I, if I died tomorrow on the freeway, every million that I might have in my universal life insurance contracts would blossom to two and a half million right now at my age of 67 <laughs> uh, and transfer tax free oh, Roth around that will do that. So my question always is once I help people understand that I go, why would I ever own a Roth when I can have all the benefits of a Roth and four additional benefits that Roth will never have. And it's totally tax free. And it's been that way long before Roths were passed in 1997. So other than that, I don't have any strong feelings on the subject. Not at all. I couldn't tell. Now, <laughs> so in other words, in the last recession, our, 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 our community faced many, many Americans losing. The, 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 the joke was, it wasn't a joke for a lot of people, the 401k turned into a 201k. Yeah. So not only do people have a 401k losing money, but they got the fees on it. And then they got the taxes on it. So all these things are compound in attacking a 401k. So the typical advisor, Doug, now here's what we're hearing on the street. The typical advisor says, oh, we don't know if it's a recession yet. 
We don't finish session yet. Just sit and wait. Hold on, hold on, hold. How how would you address that? Especially if that was your mother sitting across the table in this conversation. Okay. This is where so many times, and I've been around the block in this industry for over 45 years, okay? So I, I've lived through several recessions, the 1980 and, and, and the 1987 and, and so forth. So let me tell you, the worst 10 year period or actually 12 year period since the Great Depression was 2000 to 2012. Now, uh, most Americans, see you'll, most decades have seven gain years compared to three down years. That decade, there were five loss years. So um, most Americans, if they had accumulated a million bucks by the year 2000 without adding a dime, they saw that million dollar nest egg dwindle after 2001 to 2003 down to 600 grand. It took four years until 2007 to make back the loss because a 40% loss has to be followed by a 67% gain just to get back to break even. Mm -hmm. And so people felt like they'd lost their future. They had to put off retirement seven years. They got, they got paralyzed. I'm going to tell you what I was advising people in 2001, two and three, because in 2008, what happened as Warren Buffett put it, when the tide went out, it revealed who was swimming naked is what he said. And so uh, a lot of people lost 40% again for the second time in a decade. And it took four years until 2012 to get back to break even. So finally, 2012, they've got their million dollars back again the lost decade using indexing. Okay. Uh, most of our clients had tripled their money in that 12 year period. A million in 2000 was worth 3 million. In fact, um, just using indexing and never rebalancing uh, in that uh, decade from 2000 to 2010, the five down years, you don't lose. Of course, zero was hero. The five up years, only two times did you cap out, but the average was 7.23%. The caps on our universal life policies we owned were around 16 to 17% of the time. Now, most people, because because I didn't earn zero all five years. I, I just switched back over and earned the uh, insurance company's general account portfolio rate back then of 5%. So I only had two years of zero three years of 5% and the other years I participated in the index. So what was I telling people in 2001 to 2003 when the markets nosedive? I mean, what did I tell them in 2008? Here is your opportunity. And that's what I'm telling people right now. Okay. Let's, let's say, let's say somebody had uh, in, in February 15th of this year, $900,000 in their IRAs and 401ks in the market. And by mid-March, it was down to 600,000. Mm. What do most people do? They listen to their advisor that says, hang in there, hang in there. The mar and, and they wanna wait until the market comes back up to the high water mark of 900 grand again before they do anything. They get paralyzed. And I'm going, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. When it's only worth 600,000, why not get the taxes over and done with when it's only worth 600,000, then wait till it gets back up to 900. Why? Because you pay tax on 600,000. Let's say in a 33% bracket, you pay tax of a third on 600,000. People go, <gasps> no, pay it. What do you have a net of? Four, 400. Where should you put that? See, the key strategy is get the taxes over and done with while values are lower and tax rates are lower and then reposition. Number two, reposition the after tax IRA 401k money into a vehicle that's going to be tax free from now on. And then the third strategy is use indexing. So the next time the market crashes, you don't lose. But see, you're getting the taxes over and done with at uh, what a $200,000 tax bill. Let's say you hang in there and it gets back up to 900,000 again and Congress has to raise taxes to 50% because it's gotten them done with at 33% because they have to they have to fund this economic stimulus and all this stuff that's been going on. So now you have 900,000 uh, back in your IRA or 401k and you're in a 50% tax bracket. What's 50% of 900? 450. You're only netting 450,000. And my laser fund, my insurance contract is, is, has got 600,000 in it. It's 150,000 better off. 
it's not subject to market volatility and it's totally tax free. Now is a huge opportunity. We're helping people, we call these strategic rollouts. And I have a whole, I have a whole chapter on it in my book. So you talk about a couple of things I know that I know about it, but you talk about indexing and you talk about the laser fund. Can you explain the difference between, between the two to catch everybody up to speed? Okay. The laser fund, you know, for, for years, um, I called a max funded indexed universal life insurance policy, uh, just an MFTA in, in some of my books, a max funded tax advantage insurance contract, because that terminology uh, resonated with some of the major carriers who offered indexed universal life. So we just called it uh, MFTA, max funded tax advantage. But I wanted to brand you, Kate, the concept <laughs> because uh, a, a properly structured maximum funded insurance contract passes the liquidity test with flying colors. You can access your money so easy in an emergency or whatever to the safety test. Uh, when the market goes down, you don't lose. Okay. You, you put your money in, your principal is protected from loss. And every year you make money that becomes newly protected principal because you lock in your gains. You never lose in future years what the money you made in the past. And most traditional advisors don't know how to do that. Uh, th that's why they're sitting there going, hang in there, hang in there. You know, in 2008, so many of our clients were like cheering in, in a way they're like, go, go. They didn't care because they weren't, they didn't lose a dime. And the first 90 days of 2009, most of our clients locked in gains of 16% tax free after not losing a penny. Everybody else had to wait four years to get back to break even again. And so indexing is the strategy that's applied in the universal life contract, if it's indexed universal life to allow you to participate when the market goes up, but when the market goes down and it'll go down again, it's not a matter of if it's when you don't lose. And, and frankly, there's two rules of investing. Warren Buffett has preached for years. Rule number one, do not lose money. Don't lose money. Rule number two, don't forget rule number one. Okay. So that's why indexing is the strategy that protects you from future loss. The laser fund is laser is an acronym that I've used for years. It stands for liquid assets, safely earning returns, laser. Okay. And those four pillars that you just showed on that book cover is liquidity, safety, rate of return and tax advantages. People don't even realize that there's living benefits on the insurance contract. Can you explain what living benefits are uh, to, to the common person that's watching this right now? What would you call something that you can put your money into and you can put more money into it than you're allowed to put into traditional accounts like IRAs and 401ks and so forth. So you can put your money in there and you can take it back out again and there's no penalties. It accumulates at nice, safe rates of return. And when the market takes a nosedive, uh, you may not make anything uh, in that year, but you will, will not lose. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it averages between seven to 10% tax free, uh, which will double your money every seven to 10 years based on the rule of 72. And ultimately when you uh, retire, you a, a million dollar nest egg can generate 70 to a hundred thousand a year of tax free income into perpetuity without depleting the nest egg. Uh, it, it, it will create a predictable income stream. And when you ultimately die, uh, it will immediately blossom in value and transfer income tax free to your heirs. Now, whenever I ask that question in any, live seminar. It's so funny because it's so predictable. Well, I just described to you a max funded life insurance contract. They go, no way. I'm going, yes way. And I can prove it to you, but, but you can't call it an investment. And I'm fine with that because investments are subject to tax sooner or later, and they're subject to market loss. So I don't want it to be deemed an investment, but that's how stupid the financial services industry is when they stick their head in the sand and they will not learn. Yep. I mean, that's why I could stump Dave Ramsey, Susie Orman. They have no clue. David Bach. I know all these people, by the way, uh, many of them have been in my study groups at strategic coach and so forth, but they're, they're catering to the masses that 
are being taught, uh, you know, just put your money in a diversified uh, mutual fund portfolio and you'll average 12% someday. Well, no, Dalbar says most people are only averaging three and a half percent because they're buying and selling at the wrong time. And most people have been selling in this panic lately. The typical Dave Ramsey, the typical uh, uh, Susie Orman, the typical person from other buy, term, and invested difference type. H how come the life insurance, because the first thing a buy, term, invested difference type person sees a $100,000 premium to an insurance contract or $20,000 a year premium to a life insurance contract, they think, Why did, what an expensive life insurance. I can't believe somebody's paying 20 grand into their insurance contract. Now, can you break that down real quick? What actually goes to whatever, uh, Douglas? Yeah, if your maximum funding under the Technical and Miscellaneous Revenue Act, the, the 1988, June 21st, the, the TAMRA, okay? So let's say, let, let's say you have a, a contract that you want to uh, create that will accommodate a half a million bucks, 500,000. That's very common for many of our clients. It doesn't matter if it's 100,000 or if it's 10 million. We, we have a ton of people that set up uh, insurance contracts to accommodate between five and 10 million right now. It's unbelievable. So let's just say it's 500 grand. The most you can fund it, generally speaking, for somebody between age 55 to age 75, which is our sweet spot of people, uh, would be about a hundred grand a year. Okay. If it's whole life, by the way, it takes seven years. That's called the seven pay test. Uh, and so seven pay is a misnomer regards to uh, universal life. So I like universal life because I can get the money in uh, faster than I can with a whole life policy to comply with Tamra. And, and that's another reason why universal life is better. It's more flexible. So if I put in a hundred grand and, and if this is like a five story office building, if I was buying a five story office building, and the government came out and said, well, well, we'll let the, this office building be tax free if we, if you only lease out one floor a year in the next five years. Now that sounds stupid, but that's, that's what the government did with the Tamra law. You can only fund the, the insurance contract uh, about 20% a year over five years if you want to preserve tax free access on the back end. So we comply with that. So you're putting in, let's say a hundred thousand. You don't put it, you don't have to put in a hundred thousand. People say, well, that's an expensive insurance policy. Only about 5,000 of the hundred thousand is going towards the COI, the cost of the insurance. The other 95,000 is gravy, okay? So you, you, you can put in 20 and make up the other 80,000 when you want. But if you put in a hundred, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred, finally after five years, your office building is leased out max and it turns into this cash cow. Now you have a half a million and it's doubling about every seven years at 10%. That's what might've been doing. Okay, and so a half million doubles to a million and then a million doubles to 2 million and then to 4 million and then to 8 million. We have people 30 years ago who started out with a half a million, they have 8 million right now tax-free. And 8 million generates 800,000 a year of tax-free income. You show me anything else that comes close to doing that. So it, it's not, the, the insurance component is actually a benefit, not a cost. Um, at, at, during the funding process, you average it and it earns, it, it averages around 1%. So if I'm earning 11, I'm noting 10. If I earn eight, I net seven. Uh, but at the end of the day, at my age, this year on some of my policies I've had for 30 years, uh, if I earned a, uh, 10% uh, this year, I would net 9.95. The cost of the insurance gets cheaper as you get older. And I, I asked my audiences, have you ever seen an insurance policy that gets cheaper as you get older? And they go, no. Well, then you haven't seen one done correctly because the money is now my money because I've structured it to where my money compounding is 95% of the money. So the cost of the insurance, even though I'm older, is such a small minuscule portion of the interest I'm earning on all this money that's sitting in the policy. So if it's structured right, it, it's the, the best way to buy term and invest the difference. And ultimately uh, it, it costs the, the least amount over the long run. You know, you break down the IRR. People say, oh, this insurance is, you know, explain it, break that down, where the cost of insurance compared to a 401k or would you have annual fees and 401ks and all these, you know, junket fees, can you explain, can you dive into that a little bit about the actual cost of insurance? Because you talk about insurance costing less. Now, let's take it to another level. What about, because compared to a lot of other things that you're paying on, 
in terms of fees on your savings and investment, your 401ks? Yeah, I'll use two examples here quickly. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, critics out there say, oh, those stupid life insurance policies, they, they are so doggone expensive, the fees and the costs. I'm going, okay, let's say that you're buying a house and the realtor tells you, okay, I'm, I'm going to um, sell you this half million dollar house. And uh, there's a 6% commission on it. So what's 6% of a half a million? 30 grand. Okay. Now uh, that's, that's more than what I earn when somebody sets up a, a, an insurance policy to accommodate a half a million bucks they put into it. I might earn at the best 20,000. Okay. So, uh, so let's say the realtor says, now you can either pay a $30,000 one time 6% commission, or uh, I will charge you 1% on whatever this house values every year for the rest of your life. Okay. So, so what do you think most people would say? Wait a minute, wait a minute. So I, I, I pay you 1% on what the house is worth every year, the rest of my life. Yep. Now, if you did that for 30 or 40 years, uh, you would end up paying 900 and uh, 960,000, something like that. Uh, under that arrangement. And people say, well, that would be absolutely stupid. Well, I just described to you a, a, a typical asset manager. They charge 1%. So if they invest a half a million, they go, well, Doug Andrew over there, uh, if he was selling you one of those insurance policies, he's making 20 grand. I'm only charging you, uh, I'm only charging you 1% on that. I'm only charging you 5,000. Well, as it keeps growing in value, they keep deducting 1%. And that's why it ends up being so costly. It's unbelievable, but let's get, let's get down to the back end. So let's say, uh, let's say that you have um, a million bucks accumulated in your IRA 401k in the market portfolio with an asset manager, a traditional asset manager that are, that's charging, let's say 1%. Most charge a little bit more than that. So <clears throat> the industry came out with a 4% rule. You cannot show me one um, securities licensed advisor that can legally show a retiree predictable income out of a million dollar mutual fund portfolio. In fact, most broker dealers forbid it. They have, you have to sign a waiver uh, that you will not sue them if they take out any more than 4%. Why did they come up with a 4% rule? It's because Dalbar says, uh, if people bought and held, they would probably earn nine and they would net six after tax. Why aren't most people doing that? Because they're buying and selling at the wrong time. So the average retiree is only earning 3.49%. Hmm. So they said, you know what? <clears throat> we'll let you take out 4%. It will slowly deplete your nest egg, but not before your LE, your life expectancy. That's called the 4% rule. So let's say you got a million bucks. And some asset manager uh, that says they're the cheapest way to go, uh, they say, well, you can only take out 4% of a million. That's 40 grand. Now, wait a minute. You have to pay tax on that. It's an IRA 401k. In a 25% in a tax bracket, was 25% of 40 grand? 10,000. So you only have a net of 30,000. Well, wait a minute. They're charging you 1% fee every year on a million dollars now. That's 10 grand. So you take out that 10 grand, you pull out 40, you're netting 20 to buy gas and groceries. That's a net 2%. Pretty pathetic. In a universal life insurance contract with a million in it, all day long, I, I can pull out 8% and never deplete the principal and 8% is tax-free. I'm earning actually nine netting eight, but when I take it out, I take it out the smart way. I use the index loan process and that, that helps tweak my rate of return. I can actually take out 10% and not deplete the principal. I'm being super conservative here. The point is on a million dollars, what would you rather have? 80 grand a year of tax-free income or 20,000 of after-tax, after-fee income? Which one's cheaper now? See, I'd rather be earning 90 netting 80 than earning, you know, uh, uh, three and a half percent and only netting 20. And, and people go, huh? They don't yep. get it. Yep. And by the way, Doug, uh, we just yesterday, we were talking about annuities and the the, the cost or the, the percentage you want to take out of your retirement account is about 3% uh, 3 2.8 actually. Is, is the requirement because they have to account for taxes. What would you tell somebody who's in their 20s and 30s right now? Millennials, uh, 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 Gen Z, 
right? What, what, how should they take advantage of insurance right now, especially if they don't have an opportunity to really max fund it? What, what, or what, what type of strategy would you suggest they, they follow? If, if they can set aside 500 bucks or more a month and they do this into their own and max funded insurance contract that can be structured right, uh, that would be far better than that same $500 to $1,000 a month going into any IRA or 401k you could show me. I mean, if their employer's matching, I wish the employers would match uh, if they put it into this because this would be far better, but they could still deduct it. But nonetheless, a lot of employers don't know about this, but I would recommend people do that. And, and if, uh, if you, if you have ears to hear this, oh, here we I would take out an index universal life on my parents if they're in their 50s, 60s or 70s. Because I told my kids, listen, I have some insurance capacity I'm not using. I want you to all own a million dollar policy on dad. And by doing that, they can then put money in. And I showed them examples, putting in 600, 700 bucks a month into a million dollar policy, minimum funding. Now, I'm no. not immortal. If I die anytime, if I die anytime in the next 10 or 20 years, they will immediately be a millionaire tax-free. They can take that million and then re-put it into an insurance contract on their own life that will generate $100,000 a year of tax-free income. You show me any IRA or 401k that comes close to doing that. See, it doesn't matter when I die. If they own one on me, they immediately get a million bucks anytime between now and when I whenever I die, you show an IRA, you show me an IRA or 401k, it would take 35, 40 years earning 12% in an IRA or 401k to end up with a million bucks net after tax. Okay. So pandemic, COVID, uh, eventually we're going to get out of this thing. What would you say would be your marching orders to somebody right now? Give What, what, what financial confidence of, uh, what marching orders towards financial confidence can you give to somebody right now as we wrap up? This too shall pass. And, uh, you uh, need to seize the opportunity to rethink your thinking so that when things out of your control, see, see, people hate giving up choice and control and they don't realize they're doing that when their money is susceptible to the, to the market whipsaws and, and, and so forth. See, it's, it's so refreshing to know that during uh, the, the crash there from uh, mid February to mid March and, and even up until now that our clients are sending us letters of gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am so grateful. I mean, my wife and I, we work out on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. So this morning we're there with our trainer. He's a client and he's just going, he says this every time we work out, I am so glad that I have not lost anything, you know? And it's, it's so interesting that zero is the hero. So any of the consuming public, this too shall pass, but then they will consider repositioning some of their serious cash, maybe getting some of that money out of their IRAs or 401ks, get the taxes over and done with, but get their financial house in order, ride the market back up again, tax-free, and number two, when the market crashes again, and it will protect yourself so you never lose again. Once again, that website is, is it LaserFund, not the, just LaserFund.com? LaserFund.com. And you go in there and you can get a book uh, sent to you free for a $5.95 shipping and handling. And then if you want the audio version, the digital version, or the master class, uh, there's choices in there to, uh, to purchase those. But the most important thing is, let me just buy everybody one of these books and, and you just pay the shipping and handling, okay? Okay, 100%. By the way, folks, they've been watching this on Facebook. Make sure you click like to follow our business page for more great authors and, and influencers, just like Douglas Ames, who just heard here. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications the next time we upload a video just like this. And be sure to go to thelaserfund.com to pick up Douglas Andrews' book, The Laser Fund. So therefore, whether you're your left brain or right brain, he's got a book for you and how to handle your money throughout this crisis. So Doug, I can talk to you forever. Uh, you, you've just been so generous with your time. I uh, continue with you, Sherry, Aaron, Emron, all the, 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 the kid, all the kids you've got, uh, right? all, all, all the kids you've got. Scott Reynolds, uh, thank you for your, your, your son-in-law there. He's been, he's been a dear friend too as well. Uh, I just appreciate your family. I appreciate 
I appreciate your ministry because one of the things I read from one of your books was Matthew 25. I'm like, Douglas Sanders is a Christian? Wait, I got to double check this. It was one of the first questions I asked you when I met you in Salt Lake City. I'm just curious, are you a Christian? And so uh, yeah. you, you're doing the Lord's work. So I appreciate you for, for what you've done and in, in, in investing in us. Well, thank you very much. It's been a, a delight to be on. And uh, you're one of the handsomest guys I know out there, Matt. And so if I could just be like you, you know, uh, I, I could sell three times as many laser funds to people. Now, uh, if you want to use your whole brain, now that you've got time and you want to use your whole brain, I would recommend you read both books, the front and the other side. You got it. Highlight that, boom, use it a reference and get enough. Also purchase some for, for those of you who are in the insurance industry, make sure you purchase some for your clients too as well. So that being said, Doug, Doug thank you so much. For the rest of you guys watching this show, thank you guys for tuning in. On behalf of Douglas Andrew, my personal mentor. By the way, this, for those of you guys in my agency, PHP, if you wonder where this stuff comes from, I wish I could say I was the originator, but here it is. My mentor <laughs> shared with you all, honored to be with you, Doug. Very cool. Thanks so much. Thank you. Take right. care. First of you guys, thanks for tuning in. Again, on behalf of Douglas Andrew, I'm your mighty smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, be mighty smart today.